In this video, I'll talk about finding the volume of a solid with disks or with washers. When we're finding the volume of a solid with disks, we're looking at small disks with a thickness dx. So the area of this cylinder would be pi r squared dx. The height would be the dx. On the other hand, if we're looking at washers, this is where we have a donut. So it's very similar to a disk. It's a disk with a hole in it. And way back in geometry, when you were finding the area of something with a hole in it, you said, hey, that's pi r squared, the first radius, the outside radius, minus pi r squared, the second radius, the smaller radius there. And then let's multiply that entire area times the thickness, dx. This has some tiny thickness to it. So in this example, it asks us to find the volume of the solid that results when the region bounded by f of x equals square root of x and g of x equals 1 eighth x squared are rotated about the line y equals 3. So some of you might like to just memorize formulas and, and patterns, and that's great. If that works for you, do it. Um, you, you'd probably already have the answer from, from just looking at, at that, um, those patterns that are given to you in the book. But a lot of us like to understand what's going on uh, because then when we get to, to a question like this that we don't recognize, we can think about what's happening. So let's think about what's happening. Here's our, our graph. This is our uh, f of x right here, and this is g of x right here. And this area here, this, this area or region is being rotated about this line y equals 3. So, I always like to draw this graphic. Fancy. It's it's going around. It's going around that line. So, is this going to be a washer or a disk? Well, it's only a disk if this region touches the line that is being rotated about. However, this is not touching it, so we're going to be dealing with washers. In this example, washers. So, Let's think about what are the, the first and second radii. So, right, because we've got our, our two there. Well, the first one, the first radius, all the way down here, r sub 1, r sub 1 equals, well, what is that distance? It's 3 minus whatever g of x is, whatever that function is. So that is 1 eighth x squared. That's the first radius. The second radius is right here, and that is 3, this distance of 3, minus whatever f of x is, so minus square root of x. So it's always, always nice to draw a little sketch of what's going on so that you can uh, you can see, you can kind of build this disk. So if we were to, to look at this disk head on, we would have radius 1 going out like this, and radius 2 going out like this, and we've got this, this region or this cross-section, I should say, this cross-section. So that's looking in that direction at this whole thing. It's actually looking from about up here. Okay, that's, that's uh, each of the, the radiuses, so radii, so that we can um, 
then plug in the rest of this stuff and let's do it. So the the volume of just of a tiny disk, right? So if I'm just gonna go like this and give this this some um, some depth, the volume of each tiny disk. Let's do this. If I take this and and slice it and I'm just going to take the disk part and I slice that disk up into a bunch of tiny disks. Well, each one of those volumes is going to equal pi times radius 1 squared, 3 minus 1 eighth x squared squared minus pi times radius 2 squared, 3 minus the square root of x squared times this thickness. This thickness is dx, and that's that's what I have right here. The dx, this this little thickness. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take the integral. We're going to add up all of these little disks. We're going to have a bunch of these disks, and we're going to add them up. And the way we do that is with this sign that looks familiar it's an integral so I'm going to factor this um, this pi outside and what are the limits of integration well the limits of integration are from 0 let's show that with a bright color from 0 to where they intersect where the graphs intersect and that is at 4 where x is 0 and 4 so I'll put that in there 0 and 4 now Let's put all this in here. That's the integral of 3 minus 1 eighth x squ squared, quantity squared, minus 3 minus the square root of x, quantity squared. And this whole thing is being multiplied by dx. We're going to add up all those disks. Now I'm going to jump ahead with the algebra right here and just simplify this to get to pi going from 0 to 4, the integral from 0 to 4 of, after we do all the algebra on that, simplify it, it comes to 1 over 64 x to the 4th minus 3 fourths x squared minus x plus 6 square root of x and that is still all being multiplied by dx. And what's left here then, we're going to take the integral. And the integral of that is x to the fifth over, over 320 minus 3 twelfths x to the third minus x squared over 2 plus 4 times x to the 3 halves. Now we evaluate that using the fundamental theorem of calculus or definite integrals. So from 4 to 0. So I'm going to plug in uh, 4 for all of these and then minus plugging in 0 for all of these x's. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump ahead here and say that's going to be pi times 11.2 or for, for you fraction lovers, that is pi times 56 fifths. For you decimal lovers, that is approximately equal to 35.19. And that's the final volume of this region rotated about the line y equals 3.